Good evening and welcome to this session of Tuesday's Encounters in New York. This program is presented every Tuesday at 7 p.m. in New York time. My name is Mark Beecher and I'll be your host today. Our guest tonight is Mr. Martin Rivera from Long Island, New York. Mr. Rivera is a hypnotherapist trained in the Dolores Cannon Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. Martin is co-founder of Quantum Balance, a healing arts center on Long Island. Martin practices multiple therapies in energy medicine. Tonight's topic is waves of volunteer souls coming to earth. And I find that this is a very exciting current theme. Uh, Martin, please join us now. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me. How are you? Good, good. All nice right. <laughs> um, so can we start with your uh, uh, now this is uh, some topic that you developed at uh, the Dolores Cannon Institute or this is something more current that... it's actually both really because uh, I because um, when I first when I really started you know doing um, you know my my research and I you know building my career really into hypnosis I, first of all, I was, you know, looking for it. And, and uh, when I found Dolores Cannon, because I was, you know, searching what, what was the best um, or, uh, type of hypnosis, hypnosis out there. And I was researching all the authors and all the doctors that they do hypnosis until I found Dolores Cannon. And that was way back in uh, 2010. And she recently was releasing her, you know, her book called the three waves of volunteers and the new earth. And when I first heard that you know, presentation, it just blew my mind away. And I more than, you know, than feeling that I felt within my heart, within my whole being, like something, you know, um, really a call, you know, and I, of course, I devoured the book and, and I, you know, I researched, I, read many of her 20, 21 plus books right now, <laughs> you know, from her. And of course, and I signed off for, from the training and all that. And, you know, to make a, a long story short, all my practice, I had discovered exactly what, what she was telling, and, uh, you know, back then, uh, these new souls are coming into earth, really. And that's very, very, you know, uh, interesting because there's many things that's going on behind the scenes, and we as humans, we have no idea, we know what's going on out there, you know, <laughs> because we, we, you know, as as we, as you see the, in the latest, you know, years from the ET revelation, from the Pentagon uh, videos about, you know, the uh, extraterrestrials have been visiting the Earth and all that, you know, while people they just started discovering all this, it's it's a whole lot more that's going on in the soul level within ourselves. And these souls are, you know, proof of, you know, they had been always interacting with us for millennia or even for thousands of years. So for me, this topic is very, very, uh, um, um, very touching, you know, and very interesting because this, these new souls are, you know, a whole new level and they're giving us a help into this new transition that we as, as we as civilization are going through right now so you know even though these people don't know you know consciously this this is the uh, the paradox many of my you know these clients that i had that are going under hypnosis they have no clue what they're doing you know behind the scenes because we as humans when we incarnate into this you know into this form this there are like there's rules and regulations in the planet. And one of them is like, you cannot remember who you truly are. You know, you cannot remember your past, your soul history, you know, because as humans, we always think, you know, this is the only life we have, <laughs> you know, and of course you focus on your life. But yeah, but there's always a background of hundreds, thousands of incarnations. So, for them, you know, it's been, you know, for many of us uh, that we live in the uh, current paradigm, you know, from the, uh, uh, from re religions background or even from conventional 
you know, uh, education system. You know, nobody t teach you to that we have a soul history that there's actually there's we call unquoting, quoting, unquoting past lives, you know. So that's a part of our, you know, um, our heritage, really, because once you incarnate, your history continues and it will go on until you achieve until you eventually graduate from this earth or from this planet. If, if, if you follow what I'm saying, <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. So all this topic, it, it all begins if, you know, if you, I want to tell you all this background, what is all about these new souls and all that. So think about that, you know, we as a, as a civilization, we already had a first world war and a second world war just a f uh, some decades ago. It's going to be almost, what, 80, 90 years since we got the Second World War, you know, and all humanity was involved into these wars. But here's the thing. Ever since the human beings, you know, discovered the power of the atomic bomb, you know, how, you know, how sad was the loss of, of life in Japan, and let alone all these ecosystem, you know, disasters, and even today, we can hear about um, uh, Fukushima a nuclear plant that is spilling, you know, toxic water into the Pacific Ocean and is reaching to our shores. Even the whole continent, North America and Alaska and all the way to South America. So that is, you know, that's something that's very, very risky and is in the whole pollution and all the species are in, je in jeopardy because human beings haven't you know, acquire or understand this new level of living in harmony with the planet. And ever since, you know, um, human beings invented the, the, uh, the atomic bomb, it already, it not only was once or twice they detonated, so far, you know, between the, you know, the, you know, um, the US, Germany or um, France, the superpowers, you know, even China, uh, Russia, and so on, they had tested and detonated almost 3,000 nuclear warheads from the 1940s to the, you know, even to, to 2000s. Even North Korea had their, you know, the nuclear test only a few years ago, you know, just before the pandemic. So what human beings ignore is that we not only like, you know, creating havoc, into our ecosystem, but also into other other parts of the universe. So, the watchers, or you know what we call you know these ETs that are watching us over what we do, you know. So they you know they sound the alarms because they saw that human beings we are on the risk of self destruction, and that was way back into the nineteen forties. So. They alert, you know, the council, the council, there's a council that, you know, oversees and, 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 and overwatches the development of civilizations throughout the universe. And they came up with a plan because one of the prime directives is like they cannot interfere directly into any civilization that is still in, you know, developing because that's, that's one of the rules. So they came up with a plan. They say, okay, we can now interfere directly, but we can do it indirectly. So the plan was this. So it was a call to the universe to call for new souls, souls that are high vibration, that they don't have any karma into them because they find out, you know, or we found out actually that we as humans, we constantly are just think about our own history. We've been living into a, a current system and economic politics that had been going over for centuries. You know, if we go over to history, we've been doing dealing with the same monetary system, the same politics, the same disparities of this war for centuries, and the conflicts between us, between you know, between tribes, or you know, or or, or, or wars between us. It's like, it's endless. So, what, you know, what this, or what many of people have discovered is like, we had an interaction with Mother Earth. 
Like every time we as humans are in conflict, there's always a damage in the energetic level into earth. So they call these new souls that are like into, you know, they coming from different parts of the universe that they don't have any karma whatsoever because they reveal when I'm saying they, I'm referring to the council, all the watchers, all the guardians, right? Again, we can call it different names. They say that, you know, human beings, we have a, a symbiotic relationship with Mother Earth. So every time we are in a cloud conflict, there's always, you know, forces in nature that react. And it's something we ignore, you know, because we've been raised into this, into this education that, you know, that matter, it doesn't uh, interfere with our conflicts or our waves that we or, or, or vibration that we keep generating through emotions through thoughts and of course through action i mean that speaks a lot on the words when we you know when we act and just to mention what was going on around the world between you know the russia and ukraine war and so on the other wars that is going on today so they say you know when they they have this plan to call a new souls is because they knew Earth is in trouble. And of course, also we are in trouble. <laughs> so these new, new, these new souls are coming. That's what they're doing. They are injecting or they are uh, giving a new life into this, into this new Earth, into this timeline that we as humans, we can develop into what into our really fully potential but as everything else they mentioned that earth is going to this new transition into this new dimension or we can send to this new frequency and every time we experience something a growth is gonna be always painful no matter what let's just think about when we're like children becoming you know as a teenagers, we have this, you know, adaptation that we struggle. Like we, you still like, okay, I want to be uh, behave as a, as a young adult, but you're not ready yet. You still want to play and not having responsibilities, but at the same time, you're growing up and you have to, you know, become conscious, you become aware that you have certain responsibilities and become on your own. So think about. We as human beings in this civilization, that's exactly that we re, we're going right through right now in that middle stage to becoming like conscious of our own actions, of our own thoughts. So that's when these new souls are coming, that's what they're trying to give that new opportunity that we deserve. And of course, they always mention like, first of all, the most important thing is your home. It's the home planet because that was it's in really trouble so that's how they came up with this plan now when i mentioned like the three waves or waves really is because it had been you know eventually be, you know ever since it starts in the 1940s and the 50s the, those were the first waves of volunteers right we call them the trailblazers or the baby boomers, right? <laughs> Probably were part of that generation, Mark, right? Right, right. Um, are they making pro progress? Do we know if they're making progress? Okay, so it was it was eventually really because I want to just mention about you know these traits about him, you know. So those were the first one, and then then some of the traits is like many of them they they always struggle to adapt. You know, they always um, feel even better when they were isolated. They didn't fit into these, uh, you know, norms of society or these, um, 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 how, we, how could you put this way? Uh, they don't fit into the mold, right? They never feel into any group. So they always feel like, you know, a misfit really, but they have their own, you know, every time or every time, or some of these people, they always feel better when they are outdoors. And this is a very, uh, you know, it's very odd because 
their role is supposed to be helping, but not in the way we think like helping directly, you know, but more in the energetic level. But for them, it was really harsh to, you know, to incarnate to this planet because they never knew violence the way we do, you know, the way we treat each other, the way we saw the wars and the conflicts and the whole, you know, um, 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 spectrum of, you know, of dealing with arms and segregation and racism and so on, you know. So for them, it was very harsh. And some of them, they tried to commit suicide because they always felt misunderstood. They could never deal or they could never understand why we as human have to pay to live in, you know, <laughs> because they coming from, from planets that they don't deal with this stuff or they don't even have a language neither. They, you know, some of them, many of them, they, they're very highly mentally developed. They don't have a language, you know, like we do, you know, everything's, clear it's there's nothing to hide as we humans do you right. know <laughs> so for them it was very challengeful to incarnate into this we call it 3d dense very dense planet you know compare what because some of them they didn't have even bodies you know just think about just a, 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 a energy form that can go anywhere you want just by thought by the thought speed, you want to be in um, in Central Asia, think about it, you're dead already. Simple as that. You know, we as humans, we have to take an airplane, take hours, you know, use technology. Someone, they don't even have technologies, you know, or someone they do, you know. But for them, it was very, you know, struggling, incarnating to this planet. So... I was, that's what I consider, or Dolores, actually, that's, you know, that's how she mentioned it. And then, uh, and that was the 40s and the 50s. Those, like, two decades were the first ones they, they, you know, they start, you know, incarnating. And then they open up the, you know, the road for another wave, which was the 60s, the 70s. And think about Mark. What was happening during the 60s decade? What was happening in the USA and even around the world? you know, to this, you know, um, um, uh, rights movement, you know, the human rights movement, you know what I mean? So those times were really struggling too as well, you know, because that's how we start becoming aware, you know, into this um, a new paradigm, you know, into life. So, um, and besides this, you know, we had also the exploration of psychedelics, you know, and that was the first on into the West that they were, you know, exploring this part of the mind, you know, of course, through, you know, to the psychedelics, you know, to LS, LSD and mushrooms and so on, you know, so, but they were having this, you know, let's say, new way to see life, to explore that something else is out there. And even, you know, there were even programs, you know, secret programs into different governments when they're exploring remote viewing, when they thought only was like, you know, um, people from were psychics or were um, um, not really taken seriously because they always thought were, were wax, you know. But then when they start you know, funding research with pure science, they discover, oh, it's true. Oh, human beings, they have abilities. They always had, but they just, they know they didn't have the protocols yet, you know, into history. But now in, in nowadays, you can even research online. You could see even schools when they teach you to remote viewing, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, so this decade was very interesting by these second waves because now we have this scene of the hippies, the hippie movement. I guess you you lived through that stage, right, Mark, when you were there was the hippie movement? Absolutely. So think about when they're protesting against the uh, the Vietnam War and the um and you know and all what was going on around the you know the war, the US and all these um 
um, these governments were going, you know, into fascism in, in Latin America and Asia and all over these uh, these two superpowers that were confronting each other between the uh, Soviet Union and the U.S. and the uh, nuclear war, you know, race, you know. So probably you you went through to this when I don't know. If, uh, let me ask you this, uh, Mark. When you were in school, um, um, there were drills for any nuclear event, any possible nuclear event by, way back into the 60s? Oh, absolutely. In grade school, we, uh, <laughs> we had to hide under our desk you know, after an emergency. So See? There you go. Yeah. See? So many of your time went through. I mean, people like me that were coming to the 70s, 80s, you know, we missed that really. But, you know, you guys were, you know, in the brink of a nuclear war, right? right? Right. So you know, just think about how many, um, you know, um, even now that there's like shows and you know, people coming forward from the military that were saying, oh, yeah, we have like sightings in, in nuclear, you know, nuclear um, silos around the U.S. and even in Russia and other superpowers. I mean, they were always being active watching that they don't that we don't screw the planet or we don't screw ourselves. Right. So. You know, it's validated now that it, it, these other, uh, you know, hearings and uh, and other, you know, people had pushing forward to uh, this disclosure. You know that it is that always have been interacting, always been watching us. You know, so that's something that's you know it's it's recently coming up into until today, but decades before it was totally an embargo. You know, nobody was able to talk about this, you know, <laughs> but now it's time to let the truth expose. Right. So, right. right. Like in the 70s, and, uh, remote viewing was a military secret. Exactly. You know? Yes, exactly. Yeah. The late 60s, 70s. And yeah. even there's this other scientist that he, he came forward, even he wrote a couple of books about it from when he was able to reveal part of it and all of it, you know, through a FOIA, you know, and his name is um, Russell Targ, you know, he's still living today. And then uh, even he put up a, a, a documentary uh, out there, you know, talking about these experiments and all being funded by the CIA and by the government for over 20 years, you know. So, yeah, so there's, you know, there's a whole lot more in the picture if, if we just you know, we, we do our own really research, you can find stuff, you know, and then, um, and of course, and then going back to our topic, you know, um, this, this second wave, you know, you know, give another perspective per se, you know, we can, you know, we can assume that part of them was that transition into what society was going through into this, um, 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 the right movement, you know, back into the 60s and 70s, you know. So these other, um, I want to mention about other traits that they have, you know, with, besides, you know, they, they, uh, um, they feel better isolated. And so many of them, they don't like, you know, they don't like their, or, you know, to be married or, or they, someone they had because they feel pushed to, but they always ended up even divorced or they, you know, um, for them, it was like always a struggle to, but let alone that, you know, they love to be in outdoors, like, like I mentioned before. And of course, like I said, then they don't have an idea. Remember, we as humans, we don't know what's going on. So every time people with these traits come into a session, I don't, I, I can't say like 100%, but many of them, they do many that they have been recently coming into incarnating into the planet and when they discovered they had a life and an et or an extraterrestrial life into another planet it makes sense for them i mean when, when we hear it from third parties you know it feels strange and weird for us but for the for the for the person it makes totally sense <laughs> you know what i mean right. <laughs> so so another, another uh, um, 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 these new ideas that came into the 70s and the 80s, remember, I don't know if you remember, Mark, when um, um, first was introduced, you know, the, the Asian philosophies. 
I remember even the Beatles, you know, play songs like, you know, like the Hindu songs and all that. So, and many masters came over into the U.S. as well, even in Europe, bringing these new disciplines like yoga, meditation. So think about that. The world was opening up, you know, expanding before the Internet was created. So this new, you know, um, cultural revolution into exploring, to read, um, even the East, they had this knowledge of, of past lives and incarnation and all that. It wasn't really clear, you know, but at least was like the information was expanding, you know, like um, even in, in, in libraries, it was really hard to find a book, you know, that talks about past lives or, you know, or we can only found like ancient books, um, like the Emerald Tablets or, or the uh, ancient Egyptians or the Mahabharata from the, you know, from the, from the, uh, from India. So that talks about all this stuff that we have a past, you know? So, but that was an, an opening into our society. So think about that, you know, I just let that out there that in certain way, these newcomers were influencing our society into, into open our minds and to see there's more possibilities out there in, instead of the current absolute, you know, um, belief system that we have from religion, from, from, um, from the educational system. So it gives us the, t the opportunity to explore and to see, oh, to question yourself. There's something out there, you know, and I remember now, now we move forward to the 80s, 90s. And, and uh, we could say that was probably the third wave, probably now more into the 90s, into the 2000s. And before moving to that, I remember me and myself, you know, I was a kid. I was like 11 years old. And I was watching this, this TV series from Carl Sagan. I don't know if, if you watched that. It was called Cosmos. Right. I was 11 years old. And when I watched this, this TV series, I, I was, my mind was blowing up, you know, because he first introduced about the case of, of abduction from um, Bernie and what was the other girl, um, the husband, um, the, I'm, I'm, I'm saying the wife. It's, that was a case in Maine that were abducted by aliens and he dwells into this research and, and even though he wasn't clear about, but he mentioned in, in the series about the possibility of life out there in the universe that we that we were visiting by you know these extraterrestrials you know so for me i was a kid i was like whoa <laughs> right? right you look look forward to that every week right yeah exactly yeah. so yeah so um so that was you know a very interesting time where you know oh, like i said like this new information was flowing it, even though they they were affirming, you know, but they plant a seed in our minds. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and are we continuing to develop that? You know, I mean, actually, all we ever think about are the world powers and the power to political systems of world powers. Um, but we seem to be in a stage where we're reverting back a little bit to uh, um, we're losing some of that consciousness that has been developed over the short period of time. Right. Yeah. Have, uh -huh. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, please. Do we have a new wave of uh, volunteer souls coming to us? Yes. That's what, that's what, that's my next point, you know? Okay. So now we need to move into the nineties and two thousands. Yes. I don't know if you ever heard cases. We you know myself. I've been exposed. To, I've been exposed to these, you know, different people, and and um, and and even parents. I remember one of my first cases. I had this lady who uh, who was very concerned because she had two children, right, a boy and a girl. They were like three, three or four years apart from each other. But each one of them, when they were very little, they, they, told, they told the mother, I remember I was beheaded in my past life. I mean, the boy was four or five years old. 
talk about very specifically, I was beheaded in my past life. And the other guy was like, oh, I commit suicide. But I now I know what was my lesson. And I choose you as my mother because you're going to take care of me and I'm going to love you and you're going to love me. I mean, that's mind blowing, <laughs> you know? So here's a new, uh, 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 these new souls. Here's something that happens that is this currently a shift into our consciousness, even into the planet. Well, these new comers, they are in certain way remembering full consciousness, full conscious their previous lives. Here's another case that I'm gonna I'm, 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 I'm gonna give you as, as an instance. Um, this other boy, he was like barely three years and a half, not even four year old. And he's eating breakfast with the grandmother and the, and the aunt. Yes, the aunt and the grandmother. And all of a sudden, this kid is just, you know, eating the cereal. And then he started like speaking like very seriously. And he goes like, well, I'm coming from a, a, a red dwarf planet. That's how he described it. Red dwarf planet that was destroyed. And I used to build spacecraft. That was my job. And I decided to come here. But before coming here, I visited China, South America, Canada, and I decided to incarnate here. They were eating breakfast. They were just like <laughs> staring at it like, he just popped this information out of nowhere. You know, and and there was also another 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 detail that I want to share about it. This little boy had this club foot, you know, a little bit twisted, you know. He was born like that, you know. He was operated, you know. He was treated and all that to to set the foot right, you know. The the leg took it was like kind of like off too. So in the session we ask about it, you know, because we can ask through the client, you know. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Now, uh, the child under hypnosis, we're not allowed that, but we can do, we can retrieve the information through a parent, through any me family member, right? So mm -hmm. we asked, I asked the question, why this, you know, why this little boy had this um, deformity, you know, this, his foot club. And the answer was beautiful because said, the answer was because he has to be grounded. He has to re remember that he's living now this experience as human. And that's the way to remind him he has to be grounded. I mean, grounded into earth, you know, right. that he's living this new experience now, knowing the other one. So that's a, a certain way to, rem to, to remember him, that he, this is a new challenge for him. So... That was the answer. So if you guys think about who's answered this, um, you know, every person who goes under hypnosis, this type of hypnosis that I'm talking about from Dolores Cannon. Remember, I want to just tell, make this statement. I'm not a channeler. I don't do readings. I don't do interpretation. All the information comes through the client while there are under hypnosis where there's a part of on the protocol that we connect you to higher self the oversoul or source that's the one who answers all these questions so it's not the ego mind it's not your conscious mind that answer all all of this and there's many you know many characteristics when we are you know under hypnosis when we, 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 we have this dialogue with source, their voice change. You know, it could be very sweet. It could be very, you know, affirmative, very, you know, um, 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 confident, you know. And even sometimes um, kind of like a robotic tone of voice too, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> it's very interesting when you see, you know, how this information flows right through, you know? 
But also when people are this type of hypnosis, you know, who decides what past lives is the most appropriate for them to see is source. Sometimes they see one, two, or three past lives. Or sometimes there's a releasement from their subconscious mind, from trauma, from this belief system, you know, and so on. You know, even they have presented future lives. And what I'm saying, future life doesn't refer to this present life. I'm talking about 200, 300, 500, even 1,000 um, 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 uh, years into the future. And of course, in, like I said before, it makes sense for the person when this information is presented to them. You know what I mean? Because this type of hy hypnosis is designed for healing, either emotionally, mentally, or physically. And of course, everything is related. Our emotions, our mind system, or our mind patterns sometimes, you know, or our belief system is being, you know, it takes a role into these three fields, okay. you know. So either way, sometimes one could be more heavier than the other one, you know, in the emotional part, or could be more our, you know, belief system because you you are a creator being, but you don't know it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, th this is the part of ourselves, the eternal part of ourselves who answer these questions, because we've been educating that God, the Creator, the universe is out there like a third person, you know sitting in a throne and, and judging you and all that. It's none of that. And this, and this like beautiful, ever-loving, non-judgmental, very wise, whatever you want to call it, source, it doesn't judge you. It loves you unconditionally. You know, it gives you this information for you to remember what was your life purpose? You know, what is your life mission? So think about that, you know, when you really find this information and you act into it and you work towards to it, everything flows. You know, your life goes back in track. You know? So, yeah, so these newcomers are more conscious now. Just like the instances I said before, you know, they become aware of their past lives. They become aware of their previous lives, even in another planet. So now to make it more interesting, these newcomers or these three waves or third wave, some of them, even, you know, even though they, they could overlap into even the second or the first these other traits are very interesting because they show these psych abilities naturally without studying it, without developing. Some of them they already have this remote viewing, you know. <laughs> so others they can, you know, they can they have the ability to to communicate or to hear through mind, like telepathy. Even though people, you know, regular people like us. We don't, um, 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 it, 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 um, we don't research it or we don't really actually doing it, but they have the ability to hear people's thoughts. <laughs> right. Isn't that amazing? Yes. <laughs> so some of them, they, you know, they can even sense. Now, here's another thing. There's another difference. They can sense whether people are going to act in, in the goodwill or they have their own, you know, agendas. They can sense even from, from the distance or even from time, you know, some of them, they have the ability to have these dreams, you know, in advance, and like something's gonna occur in a day and a week or months or years later. So they have this ability too, you know? So, okay. so. so so through the hypnosis, mm -hmm. um, sort of the, the souls make their um, appearance. I mean, the souls are, you know, past lives, whatever, are 
coming through the individual under hypnosis? Yes, we are able to speak first through the soul, right? We, speak, we have this dialogue, you know, we, we, when they're exploring these past lives. Like the protocol is like, like I say, like every time, even for us, it's a surprise what people is going to explore because we don't know it either, you know, it's part of the protocol until, you know, we start making questions like, first, let's, let's, let's do a little exercise, Mark. Let's say like, this is a past life, you know, and I'm guiding you. Now you land up right now into this past life. We're in the future. All right. And I'm going to say, Mark, this is an important day. Now, can you describe me? What do you see around yourself? You know, you start describing me. There's a monitor, there's a computer. I'm talking to someone, you know, and then you can describe me all the walls, you know, who's with you, how you feel your body, you feel younger, you feel old, you feel your body female, male, and so on. And then, okay, there's someone else with you. You And you're going to say, of course, oh, I'm talking to someone in the computer. You know, okay, who's that person? Oh, some guy who's talking about some crazy stuff, you know, but I think it's important. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's I want to listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's how the protocol start going on. And then we start moving you through an important day to another important day where something important happened. You know, so we're talking about with this entity or with this other lifetime, you know, and another time right, to retrieve the information because something happened. Even sometimes um, we put in through the, the, the death scene, you know, how did they die? You know, someone they were able to see and someone they don't, but it's okay, there's always a reason why. And then we move you to another lifetime, all right? So once we finish like moving you through, we explore one, two or three past lives, then that's the other part. We have this dialogue with, like I said, we have yourself with source, you know, we say more simple source. So, you know, many times it presents itself like that source. And it always refer as we it never, it's very few times that I say, oh, I am. It's more like we, you know, because it could be either, you know, source or it could be one of the teams when I say like a guy, a guardian angel or mass ascend the masters too. Mm -hmm. But on this protocol, it's most likely source that knows everything about yourself from the moment you were or you decide to explore the universe coming from source. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I know for, for many of the audience, may, you know, it might, you know, sounds like, you know, weird or strange, but it's every time, you know, we have a client. It goes through the same process and that's the one who delivers all these questions, you know, because we ask the client to come with, with the list of questions, even from their ailments, you know, accidents, dreams, third parties, like I say, you know, like the instance before, you know, I had this, the end and making questions for, for his nephew, for her nephew. So we can do that because in that level of consciousness, everything is unified. There's no separation. As we humans, you know, we interact right now. It's not one. Once we start speaking with with resource, we can even retrieve other other, other type of information. Even you know, is source considered is it's okay? It'll do it. Otherwise, say no. It's enough. That's enough for now. It's enough formation for the client. You know, so yeah, so all these going back into uh, these psych abilities of these newcomers. The other one that I want to uh, I want to share with you, Mark, and the audience is like this is very interesting too because this other trait is like they can be in two different places at the same time. It's called by location. Or even have a, another client that he was able to be in two, three or four different places at the same time. It's called ubiquity. You know, for us it's crazy, but for them it makes sense. <laughs> like interacting everything at the same time. Just think about now, you know, um, 
you're in part of New Jersey, I'm in Long Island, right? Now, thanks to technology, we interacted, right? In two different places at once. Right. The way with your mind, just like remote viewing. <laughs> Interacting with two different persons or two different places or three different persons in three different places at the same time. How's that? Isn't interesting, right? Right, right. <laughs> so yeah, this, and of course there's more like channeling, you know, you heard about channeling. You see, you know, when we have our previous conversation, you were, you know, you were telling, you were telling me about uh, this, um, um, this guy who was able to ship form or something like shape shifting their face and all that because he was channeling, you know, different beings and all that. Yeah. These people had the ability to, to channel, you know, to, of course, you know, but our current system has been misunderstood, you know, and I gave you, I'm going to give you another instance about this, um, 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 about this quality. And, 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 and it's, it's very typical uh, questions because, you know, I don't know if uh, you, Mark, or some people in the audience ever heard, you know, ever have friends through friends or, 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 or siblings, you know, that they had schizophrenia, the schizos, you know. I remember it's been like three or four times, I guess, when, you know, the um, 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 clients pull these, pull these questions about it, you know, if their grandparent or an uncle or an aunt or any siblings, they, they had this, you know, and they've been fully sedated, you know, fully in, in meds, you know. And I remember it's very typical question and, and the answer is very, very interesting because, I, you know, source, I remember saying, replying, oh, these people, oh, well, this, you know, referring to the person who's experiencing this, they say, no, you know, when every time you guys see him or her talking nonsense or they speak in different language or nobody, no, or, 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 or speaking to someone like for us, it's like, oh, he's speaking by himself, you know, it's kind of crazy, you know? No, he said, they able to see, interact with other beings from other dimensions or even on other planets. I was like, wow. He said, yes. So now like humans, they're not able to comprehend that yet, but they will. Unfortunately, you know, for those people who experienced this, they had been misunderstood and mistreated and even sedated. And instead of helping them, it really ruins their lives. Mm. You know? But I think we, you know, we're moving forward to, um, you, know, you know, to that kind of knowledge that we can no longer judge them, you know, but more understand them, you know, because it's sad what they're doing to them, you know? because our current um, medical science, it doesn't understand that part of ourselves that we are a multi-dimensional beings. You know what I mean? Right. So, so yeah, so those are like, you know, like I say, many of these traits from these newcomers as well, you know, you know, even, even though, you know, some of the, of the first or second waves, yes, they, they, um, they, um, they manifest all these uh, traits that we mentioned before, of course, you know, but I just want to put them in certain order so people can understand, you know, because it's actually, it's not new, really. You know, we always had these seers through history, you know, people who channel, people who can, you know, psychics through, you know, through time, you know, in different, you know, into our, um, our cultures, you know, in different parts of the world. Yes, there's always someone, you know, the shaman and all that. But mm -hmm. now, you know, that we're moving to this new shift, is we all can have, we, we all can do that. Either it can be activated, it could be educated, and it could be, you know, manifested. Like I said, like at these newcomers. They naturally now have these abilities more often, you know, than before. So, yeah. So I hope, you know, you guys understood this, this topic about, you know, because it's very fascinating. And like I said before, help is, you know, they're doing help to us, even though, like I said, it's not conscious, but they're doing the, the energetic level, you know. Some of them have been saying like, 
even like they been walking into malls into crowds and all that the energy are expanding somehow they stimulating you know like the dominant effect you know oh i feel good i don't know i just took a walk you know and i came back and i feel okay and all that where is that coming from well it was coming from them because they do in this energetic level unconsciously and very few they do it consciously <laughs> all right right so, now yeah. yeah now the hypnosis uh, removes the barrier the conscious barrier to these thoughts so uh, can the hypnosis help uh, develop those skills i mean after a period of time or a period of sessions would it help to develop these skills or yes absolutely mark you know i had clients where even they had revealed that you know one of the things that they recommend is that you practice self meditation you know that once you dwell into your inner peace something's activating too of course when people come to the session yes something it becomes active in you know in in into whatever uh, psych abilities that I mentioned before, yes, and even other ones that are not really popular out there, but yes, it depends on the case, on the person, the person, you know, some of, more, some of them will be more aligned to this, you know, psych ability, some mm -hmm. other will be more like in the uh, channeling, others in the remote viewing, others in the telepathy, others into the energetic healing that is spreading more and more, you know, like Reiki, you know, or distance um, uh, at the distance as well you know and then uh, and of course there's other ones like it's called um uh, um like automatic writing you know like you have your your your, uh, your eyes closed and you channeling but writing at the same time without seeing what are you writing and uh, it may becomes a message it becomes um uh, you know an advice coming from whom coming from source or coming from higher self or coming from your guides, your right. spiritual guides. So yeah, all the people will activate into healing, you know, into transmuting energy, you know? So yeah, there's all times really. That was a good question. So. Yeah, that, uh, and speaking of guides, um, you, do you think guides are a one-on-one -on -one relationship or a guide um, can be guiding hundreds or thousands of souls or people at that time? Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so far that I had um, um, uh, found yet is there's two types of guides, right? Okay. There's one type of guide that had incarnated into earth. It could be your grandmother, your aunt, your uncle, any siblings that already, you know, passed on even into present life yes it could be a, you know a father or mother or it could be backwards it could be you know my niece my daughter mm -hmm. my daughter it could be one of them as well you know but then you know when they pass on they continue doing they um, um uh, having this interaction through dreams that's very common through dreams or they always send in you know signs and when we talk about signs, it could be anywhere. It could be through a license plate. <laughs> you know, it could be numbers. You know, it could be uh, um, uh, publicity. It could be a message. It could be a text. It could be a show like this one. You know, um, it could be, yes, it could be voices sometimes. Yes, of course, you know. <laughs> and then, um, and here's the other one. The other one, what we call the guardian angel, those beings, they're not required to incarnate in the planet. These are very high develop. All right. And uh, they have their job and they all, like I said, it's like a team. They always coordinating between, you know, souls and they advise even the guide or either, either the guardian angel, they advise these souls before coming to earth. Let's say a new soul or a new soul is coming to incarnate into the planet. Yes they their job is to you know to advise the soul what's the best option for them it's just to advise nobody push you nobody you uh, nobody uh, really tell you oh you have to do this and that no 
you always you always have the power of, of choice and that's your free will but they give you your, the best advice all right so yeah this this could be an event like i said the uh, the, the what, what they call the master asc ascended masters yes this these beings they of course they had to live in the planet and that, that's that the word they they ascend it all right they graduate in the planet but they decide to stay in the planet as that role to help other human beings or the other souls that are experiencing this incarnation to this planet. And it could be sometimes one, it could be two, it could be a council. Yes, depends on the soul development, depends of the soul, how developed is and depends on their mission. Because there's all types of souls and all kind of missions of, of, of purposes. Yes. Right. All right. So we are moving to questions from the audience. Or you have more questions, uh, Mark, so far? Um, I just uh, think about this occasionally. I know, uh, depending on the source, the, the dimensions, you know, we know our three, uh, the three dimensions that we know of, but uh, I think even science has told us there's anywhere from 12 to 30 to 50 or 100 dimensions, yes. uh, which would all occur and exist simultaneously. Yes, um, exactly. You know, do, you, do you have any uh, thoughts on the dimensions or how, yes. how yes, we that's... pass from one dimension to another? Right. That's exactly what happens when people go under hypnosis. Like I said, they explore one, two, or three. It could be, we consider past, but it's not the past. It's existing. Sometimes yeah. they can show it into a future lifetime. I mean, I had clients where, um, let's go the more easy one, all right? It was showing a lifetime in, in the border between France and Germany during the Ice Age. That was 12,000 years ago, right? And then the very next life, source presented he was an engineer cargo going to mars in the year 2150 mm -hmm. and he's he's living right now into into our lifetime and, I, and my question to source is like why do you show him this like first the past and then the future he goes like okay well the past because you know he's been a leader because he was a tribal leader for 50 50 people and they consider family, you know, and that was the first lesson, you know, to remind him he's a leader. And even though he works at, at this, uh, um, 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 a car dealer, his job by smiling and doing his best, helping people is making the life better, liking the, the life easy when he smiles. So that's important because it, you know, inside of him he didn't he didn't feel like kind of worth it what he was doing he said no he's important in his community and then uh, my question was okay why do you show him this future lifetime oh because he thought that was the only life that he is gonna ever have and he said no life continues and of course we explore a little bit about you know what he was doing he was going to this spacecraft you know, with over 300 people, you know, and he told me about information about how um, a human's Mars colony was setting up. It were buildings, underground buildings, and, you know, more details about, you know. So, but yeah, they see like these three different dimensions going on at the same time. So think about that, you know. We think the future, you know, the past, you know, as we saw, as we see like linear time, it's not. Right. It's existing at the same time. And in during hypnosis, we tap into it. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? So we, sh we shouldn't be concerned about uh, our current life as much as we are, because we, we're just going to have another life in the future. Right? Exactly. Yes. I mean, you progress continuously. You get stuck somewhere. Oh, remember, you know, you, you'll be amazed when people find out when they have a past life and they got stuck 
you know they, they they're repeating the same lesson they had before because they couldn't understood they couldn't go over it you know that's what we call the concept of karma and not necessarily is like a, a punishment it's actually a an opportunity to learn you know in a different way of course but yeah the universe gives you these opportunities until you get it so yeah you focus on your present but one of the things one of the really you know advantages of this hypnosis is like it tells you okay what do you have to work on what do you have to change what do you have to forgive what do you have to you know uh, embrace sometimes you know so yeah for every person it's like literally a universe within within themselves and each one of us has their own different journey really you know, it's not like school that uh, 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 students from uh, from high school, they were like, you know, 14, 13, all the old 14s, 14 year old. No, it's all mixed up. There's new souls, the old souls, and then people are like, you know, repeating the same lesson over and over because they cannot get it. Those are the ones that really struggle to, right. you know, <laughs> but yeah. The, the whole true reveal in the session during this this type of hypnosis the reveal is this closure and then okay then there's your choice should i keep mistreating myself others or should i you know put my stuff my stuff in order and focus on myself you know stop being controlling others you know things like that you know this uh, so many nuances about it you know in each case so but yeah it's very revealing how long is a typical session? Oh, that's very interesting too. Typical session under hypnosis, it could mm -hmm. last from two to four hours under hypnosis and it's been recorded. So think about that. So sometimes when, you know, people walk into the office to the time they walk it out, it could be five, six or eight hours. Initially it only takes one session. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't rely on us that, oh, okay, you have to come back for a second. No. Some cases, higher, even source it, it will mention, okay, this person needs to come back, you know, eventually, or we'll say in months. Mm -hmm. I had a client say, oh, she has to come back in three weeks. I was like, wow. We're like, why? Oh, because we've, we're helping her, but she needs to rest and come back for another information and more healing. I was like, okay, so here's the recording. You got to hear it, you know, and go through and, it's, and and that was your choice. So, but yeah, I could say like 60% of clients, it's only one session. The okay. other 40 could be a second. But yeah, so it's like a whole, you know, um, um, chunk of information, really. Think mm. about two, three or four hours of information. <laughs> So it's very transformational. And that's just the free flowing conversation. You're asking questions or they're just offering up. Yes. Their, you know, their opinions or their remember their it's insights. Yeah, well, remember, it's like when I said one, two, three, we explore mm -hmm. those past lives. Right. And then we have this conversation with your questions that you brought in. And of course, I make more questions because there's always a reason why do you, you know, I always make these questions to source. Why do you show him the first, the first past life? What is the reason? Okay, this and that, you know, we have the reply. And then here's another question for myself. Okay, is there any person, any people in, from that lifetime relating to this present lifetime? Oh my God, it could be, oh yeah. Many times like, oh yeah, it's John. I was like, okay, John is the, he's his cousin, right? Yes. Okay, so why they interact? Now, here's my question. Why are they interacting again into this lifetime? And we can hear the contracts. We can hear the agreements between souls, you know, even for enemies mm -hmm. that you consider enemies. Sometimes they were, you know, your father in another lifetime. Or was your daughter or your son in another lifetime? <laughs> you know, it's really, really, you know, uh, like I said, very revealing. You know, so, but yes, all this, I made all these inquiries first, and then the list of questions that you brought to the sessions, you know, it could be 40, 50, 60 
questions. I had a lady who brought me 120 questions. <laughs> you know, sometimes sources say, okay, that's it. That's enough. I remember we were 40 something questions, you know, and sort of said, okay, that's enough. I was like, why? She had more. He said, this is, she, she, he said, I'm going to give her time to understand all of this and process it. And then if she wants to, she can come back. I'm like, okay. But yeah, because it could be, you know, like I said, a, a lot, a lot of information, you know, to process and to change into yourself, you know? So, yeah. Source says I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super busy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So any other questions, Mark? Um, I don't know. I, let me see if we got anybody here. Oh, Adriana. Hi, yes. how are you? Hi, Martin. Hi, Adriana. How are you? Very good. I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, to start, thank you because the topic is really very good. Really, really, really good. And when those sores come to earth, you mention it normally they don't say I am, it's no, we are, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And they can recognize in between each other here on earth? Uh, I mean, between souls you're talking about? Yes. That de depends on client, really. If it's like a high developed soul, yes, they're able to recognize it. Other than that, only, you know, most of the cases they don't, you know, it's like, a normal human like you and I and all of us really, you know, but on their, like I said, on their, only on their hypnosis, that's when the, the truth is revealed, you know, okay. and so far, you know, like I said, I had discovered four people, they were like, um, four, like second, their second incarnation in the planet, and one was actually the first incarnation, it was a baby, really. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was revealed to that, you know, to, you know, to the mother, really. But the other ones, you know, were directly clients. And of course, I had retrieved information that they were, they had, you know, other uh, siblings, you know, nephews, nieces, that they, they were volunteers too. So, yeah. So it's kind of interesting, right? Yes, it is. It, especially because uh, normally this type, the souls, they has the tendency to be, um different of uh -huh. the rest of the kid right right yes and it could be different yeah they have the lifestyle difference um and hard to them to uh get into this the system we have here as a, we growing up no yes yes that's one of the things i was mentioned before correct um, yeah that the uh they sometimes they show these psych abilities, you know, and then uh, and it's hard for them to fit into the current educational system. Sometimes some of these kids are, you know, misdiagnosed, you know, um, um, you know, misdiagnosed with um, 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 uh, hold on, hold on, let me just connect my computer because I'm running out of battery. <laughs> Sorry about that. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, I'll be quick. With autism. All right. Correct. Some cases, I'm, I'm not saying all of it. No, no. Some cases that I had discovered through, through, you know, through hypnosis. Yes. Some of these autistic children is actually they're not autistic. They functioning into a different level. All right. Some of them even see like the life spectrum. They could see different, you know, the airwaves. They can see our, our frequencies from all our own bodies. Like just the bee that could see, you know, the light spectrum more wide open. Remember, as we as humans, we can even see less than 5% of the light spectrum. Yes. Think about that. So, uh -huh. yeah, some of these people, uh, you know, they could see, they have a, a wide range of, to see this light spectrum. That's one of the traits that I forgot about, uh, Mark, but yes, that's the one. So, yes. I mean, yeah, it could be a range of different, like I say, in each one of them, uh, it manifests a different trait. Not all of them, but yeah, the sum of them, yes, they do. All right. And the another hand is um, other souls also come to do opposite, not to come to help us, if not to take advantage of us on earth. 
no, to, it's always a help, really. And well, when you talk about the other part, we could say the negative part, those souls, in some cases, yes, they fulfill a role to show you a lesson. Nice. All right. Yes, yeah. some cases they have revealed. Yes, yes, they do. I'm gonna I'm gonna give another instance, right? That good you know, that was a good question, Sandriana. Here's here's the instance. I had a client who was mistreated badly when she was a child, you know, by the father, right? And she had she was traumatized psychologically, you know, physically too. And she had this resentment, you know, for and you know, as a result, she was like very depressed. Um, lack of self-esteem and of course you know she wants to know why you know why she got to have this you know abusive father you know and here you go in the session it was revealed that he volunteered he volunteered to fulfill this role to teach her to self-love because in another past life she had this belief of oh love comes from third parties she got the attachment all the time so he taught he, you know he taught her to detach you know and to look inwards because love is from yourself it doesn't rely in your parents not in your brothers not even to your husband or boyfriends no it's you wow. you have to learn to self-love See, that's one of the belief systems that we all have. Oh, you know, I need the love from, you know, my parents uh, or from my wife or my husband, from my daughter, and I was suffering because they don't call me. No. <laughs> you know, it's it's really why, you know, I, I, I open her when people, you know, this they find out this and guess what? That resentment is gone. That sadness, that trauma, it makes sense for them. Like, ah, oh, I get it now because it was showing to this, you know, this soul history, what happens into another lifetime. You know, I remember I had a client who was, he loves the sense of, of, of life, you know, and she had to live through the dark times in this present life so she can under, embrace and understand the light. She can value the light again through suffering. Unfortunately, yes, we're living into this, you know, um, 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 to these two different polarities, black and white, you know. But once we emerge above with no judgment, you could see clear from higher, higher consciousness. And of course, during the session, they can see that. Wow, that's very interesting. And then another <laughs> person pick me up and say, all right, if you are as a parent, you see those children acting different, what you should do as a parent? Okay, research. Always research. Question yourself. Do not fall into the trap to, oh, I'm going to take him to the med, you know, to, uh, and they ended up being in medications. That's totally wrong. I advise to do research. You know, there's other ways, you know, these children are high developed. They need more activities. They need uh, um, more playful time. You know, it's, it's very unfortunate how the education system wants to label everything, you know, feed everything into, one, you know, into and to study all the same, you know, um, 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 assignments when you're not supposed to do that, when you you don't need them, when you, you know, whatever you come to develop, you know. So just think about the educational system that is going, what's the best out there in the world? You could see Finland, South Korea, Japan. These kids, when they're like, they don't they don't they don't give it like um, um assignments until until they fully develop until nine or ten years old they don't have homework they have more playful time and they learn better that way so they help in their you know their early stage of brain development they become more curious more successful instead of like going to stress into you know into the test 
you know, when you're a six, seven year old, you know, going to math, or, you know, when people, when some of these kids, they don't go into these engineer careers, they're more artistic, more creatives. Why are you, you know, why you pressure this kid to something he's not going to be using into the rest of his life? See, so. Make a lot of sense. Living to this absolute, you know, system. Yes. Wow. Right? All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Very interesting. Thank you. All right. Any other questions so far? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Are there any other questions? Um, now, your, your practice is on Long Island, and the name of the practice is? Yes. I'm in basin in Long Beach, Long Island. That's mm -hmm. my office. And then uh, people can reach me in my website, which is uh, um, www, uh, qu um, quantum balance that center. So my website is, is bilingual because, you know, uh, I, I manage Spanish and English. So yes, if someone log in, you could see the two home and house too. So yes, so in that people can reach me through that. Or um, I always prefer, you know, to my website, but you know, I have my, uh, um, uh, I have Facebook, I have Instagram. People can reach me through QHHT, Martin Rivera. That's how can people can find me either both Instagram or Facebook. So, and of okay. course, I have my personal Facebook, which is only Martin Rivera. And I always, you know, display and share some um, um, of, um, of, uh, session, segment sessions, you know, what people allow me to share. Even I have a YouTube, which is QHHT Martin Rivera. And you can, people can see even, you know, some of my work there too. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was a great, great presentation. You know, it's, uh, and it encapsulates a lot of the things that many of us have been learning over the last 10, 12 years type thing. Um, you know, so it merges together like, okay, maybe, well, not maybe, but now it convinces us that this is all real. I mean, this is all. Well, this exists. I don't want to say it's real. It exists. <laughs> well, um, yeah, you're right, Mark. For some yeah. people, yeah, you could label. Yes, it could be real. Yes, yeah. it's so, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you very much. Uh, All right. I think I think uh, I don't see any other questions here. So, um, it it was great, and thank you very much. All right, it was it was my pleasure to to be with you, Mark, and I'm, I'm really grateful with Ernie and with yourself. So thank you so much for for, for this invitation. And I, I actually I hope to come see you at some point in the future. Sure. So very good. Thank you. <laughs>